Okay guys, today we're going to be talking, doing kind of an updated list on hiking slash pack knives. Now with summer well underway, or fast on its way I should say, these are some options at different price points and different setups configurations that I think make really good backpacking slash pack knives. Whether they are in your backpack or on your body, uh, these are some really great and fantastic options. I do have a wide variety of different knives here or a wide variety of different bladed options here just because I think that uh, backpacking is very dependent on what your idea of it is. Some people would see a knife strictly as useful for opening packages, you know, maybe cutting some cordage or some rope. Other people might have a different idea and they, you know, want to start fires. So having a knife to make kindling process light amounts of wood for small fires might be their idea. So hopefully I have most of the bases covered here. I do try to have a wide variety of tools and options. So th these are all things that I would realistically carry and a lot of them that I actually do carry for different types of backpacking uh, excursions. So without any further ado, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon and the Instagram for more content. So let's jump right into it. Okay, hopefully it won't be raining any more on me, so I'll take these little gloves off. But I wanted to start off with some folders. Now, once again, like I said, everyone's idea and background for backpacking is going to be different. For some people, it might be just a few days, a small excursion, and maybe you just want a blade or a tool that is good for food prep. And so the one that I thought I would throw out there is the Spidey Chef. Now, of course, this is a folder, so it's not really going to be as tough or durable for doing things like batoning or kindling. But if you're realistically just looking to open, you know, your packages, maybe a freeze-dried food or or if you're looking to do some literal food prep, this is going to be a fantastic option because it really is designed to be like a chef's knife. So it's good for those uh, options or it's good for those reasons. In addition, you know, if you do need to cut cordage or do a little task, you know, maybe carve or whittle on some stuff, this is a good option for that. Not to mention, it's just a really good folder. I even EDC it, but it's just a great option for a lot of things. But being that it is a really kind of food prep driven knife, I thought it'd be worth mentioning for uh, backpacking and packing in. The next one is going to be a Victorinox. Now I feel like I talk about the Farmer a lot, but the Farmer really does check a lot of boxes. It does give you, of course, a saw, gives you a main blade as well. And of course it does give you a really solid awl if I get this guy out, gives you a really solid all. So overall, it gives you a number of tools to handle different little camp tasks, nothing too crazy. Once again, really more driven towards opening packages, doing smaller kind of tasks uh, that you might find yourself doing in lighter duty backpacking instances. Okay, so those are the two folders or folder and multi-tool. And with those out of the way, let's talk about some small fixed blades. Now, once again, for me, small fixed blades are really going to be more for light kinds of tasks. Other things you could push these little guys into is maybe if you're using like a portable stove, you can use this to strike, you can use the back of this to strike a ferro rod to throw sparks on your stove to start it up. So those are some other tasks you can do. Of course, a lighter uh, carving and camp crafting, but you're not really going to be able to like do much batoning with a small Mora Eldris. But I do know a lot of backpackers do really like the Mora Eldris because it is a very small, very compact package. And once again, if it fits your needs, it's going to be really quite a nice little blade to have. And it's a little bit more robust than the folders, but at the same time too, it's still a very small package to carry. Now, if you want to do, if you do want to step it up just a little bit. The SE Azula is also good. I did modify the back of my Azula, as you guys can see here, to offer me some ability to strike a ferro rod. So it's similar to the uh, Mora Eldris for me in that regard. But in addition, it's just a little bit bigger overall, especially in blade length. You do have a little bit of ability to baton with this and a little bit more ability to feather stick uh, larger pieces of wood. So overall, just a little bit more uh, of a bit ability handling larger pieces of wood but still realistically not going to be you know some crazy type of survival knife and realistically a lot of these knives like i mentioned wouldn't necessarily be the best for survival 
Okay, so now let's push it up into some bigger knives. So really more pushing it into camp knives. Now this is the territory that when I go backpacking, I tend to really like to have these size of knives. And part of that is due to, you know, what I need. Part of it's also due to being in Alaska. You know, I like to have something that's just a little bit larger. It has a little bit greater capacity because we have a higher chance of running into problems and not being able to get help. If you go on, you know, different local trails down lower 48, most of the time you're not even out of cell reception. Most of the time here, you're out of cell reception long before you even start your trail. So having, you know, knives that are kind of capable of do all blades is really important, at least to me. So the first one for me is the Northern Knives or 3DK MAK Multi Animal Knife. Now this was originally designed as a skidding or animal knife, but it is also just a general purpose uh, camping slash bushcrafting slash survival blade and I really like it and uh, this one you will usually see actually being carried on my Desert Eagle. Uh, the holster for the Desert Eagle, I put this sheath on the Desert Eagle so usually the MAK goes with me just kind of as a tag along for my wilderness pistol. If I have my wilderness defense pistol, I will usually also have that knife. Now, other dedicated blades that are going to be in the same kind of size range are going to be things like the JBK Layman. I really like the Layman, especially for a backpacking rule because it is a reasonably thin, very lightweight, but still, you know, good sized, you know, moderately sized fixed blade that you're going to be able to do a lot with. At this point, you know, you are a good solid few inches longer than something like this SC. Azula, as you guys can see there, which gives you capability to span larger pieces of wood and overall process more wood with this uh, type of tool. So you're going to be able to do things like feather sticking and batoning a lot better with this knife. But being that it is so slim and so trim, it is still very, very lightweight. So you have a really good sized blade that is very comfortable to hold on to. And you know, you actually have a proper full handle and a proper full blade but at the same time too it is super super lightweight really one of my favorite knives it is still a you know traditional kind of bushcrafting knife but it is very lightweight and but yeah it still retains a lot of capability okay now pushing into a similar vein as the jbk layman and of course the MAK is the Condor Pterosaur. Now this is definitely more budget, but it is very similar to things like the 3DK MAK. It is just a little bit longer, uh, but they're about the same size and pretty similar in a lot of specifications. But uh, of course this one does use 1095 high carbon, but it is a really great bushcrafting slash camp knife. And being the fact that it has a plastic overmolded handle, it is reasonably lightweight. It is definitely not as lightweight as the JBK Layman, but then again, the JBK is a fair bit more expensive because this is a custom knife. So, you know, this is going to be on the higher end, but if you are looking for, you know, how to get the most performance out of the lightest weight, oftentimes it's not going to be cheap. Anyways, the Pterosaur is a great option or a great alternative to that if you are looking for something that is, you know, full-sized and is going to be capable of a great deal more than, you know, things like the little Spidey Shaft or the Victorinox Farmer. Okay, last one that I have on the list, and the reason why I haven't really been saying knives in this list is actually a hatchet. And for me, I chose the GBA Wildlife Hatchet. And the reason why is purely because it is a very small hatchet. Now, of course, G uh, GBA does make the hand hatchet and smaller hatchets than this, but this is, I think, realistically, as far as performance goes, about the smallest you would want to go for having a very packable, but yet still very high performance hatchet. Now, of course, a hatchet isn't going to necessarily be the best alternative to a knife, but if you are doing a lot of wood processing, this will still feather sticks. Obviously, this is going to split wood better than any of the knives mentioned here and it's going to be able to process the most amount of wood for fires and such uh, then like I said 
it do it better than any of the knives mentioned here. So this is a really good alternative depending on what you are wanting to accomplish out of your backpacking. And uh, it can definitely work out. And of course, you can always push it into a pinch, you know, of doing things like cutting open your packages for food if you're carrying food in or processing food or different natural resources. You know, this has a lot because it's so small and because it's so lightweight for a hatchet. It has a lot of knife-like attributes that you can push it into. The other thing I do really like about the GBA wildlife hatchet over things like some people might say, why not go with something like a council tool or Holtzbrook? And once again, it just goes back to size. This is for what its uh, class is, the smallest in its class. And also at the same time, especially like Holtzbrook, have usually much smaller uh, cutting edges that are tapered, you know, on both ends. Whereas the Wildlife Hatchet has a very long kind of bearded out blade. And uh, while it is a little bit more fragile for hatchets, it is very nice when it comes to uh, doing knife-like tasks. So like I said, you have a lot of blade here to do things like feather sticking, do things such as notching if you need to make 10 pegs. Uh, you, you do have a lot of ability with this. So you can definitely push the GBA Wildlife Hatchet into knife-like rolls. Once again, it's not going to be a perfect knife replacement, but you can do a lot of knife-like tasks with it. So that's why I thought I would throw it in this list because legitimately I would probably carry that on a backpacking trip. I have not yet full disclaimer but i do think it would actually make a pretty good um i do think it would actually make a pretty good companion if you were really looking for a hatchet and once again I'd like to share you know thoughts ideas and theories with these uh videos it's not always 100 percent fully experiential though trust me guys i have carried this and used it on a lot of bushcrafting excursions uh you know it's not like i'm just saying oh that looks like a nice knife right there or a nice hatchet right there you know uh, i definitely have put a lot of use on it and it still has in some spots some nice blood stains from the animals i've processed with it and and uh, yeah, it's lived a full life. And if you watch the videos, you can certainly see that. But uh, anyways, guys, that is kind of my uh, blades for backpacking. Once again, they're not all knives, most of them are. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed the list. As always, God bless and I'm out.